The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began, began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. I am humbled and enlivened by the temple talk that was shared this morning, and I thank you all for considering the challenge that was set before us. May it bring life and freedom to our community of faith. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. This is where we start today. It's a good place to start because it's our Sabbath. And you made it here. So, check. Good job. You made it here. You are remembering the Sabbath, and we together are keeping it holy as well as we can. So we're here to worship love and serve God. It's one of the Ten Commandments. You may recall from your Sunday school lessons, or maybe even from like a Charlton Heston movie or a uh, Prince of Egypt movie that my kids watched. Anyway, I am reminded of the dramatic scene in a lot of those movies where the Red Sea was parted and God led the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery, and out of reach from their captors. God had rescued the Israelites from the bondage of slavery in Egypt, and the commandments were a gift given to them. We can forget this sometimes. They were a gift. Those people who are wandering in the desert needed guidance. God gave the Sabbath day for the purpose of remembering what's important, what the covenant the covenantal relationship was, how it was deeply rooted in relationship between God and God's people. To remember to love and worship God on the Sabbath, to remember to rest, and to remember that God made everything good in God's creation. God rested on the seventh day, and so do we. So in thinking about this this idea I just said, about how Sabbath is a gift, I thought of important gifts that I've gotten throughout the years. And maybe some of you who are married received as well some fine china at your wedding as a very important and special and treasured gift. Maybe you can imagine, even if you didn't get fine china, how there are cabinets in some houses of behind cabinets that have glass doors and the delicate porcelain, crystal, and um, fragile things are placed behind it. 
My husband and I received a fine china um, setting and at our wedding, we received plates and platters, silver and crystal, and it was, it is, it was all treasured, and we are grateful for these things. It was so treasured that we kept it in a hutch. We even had a hutch built by one of our family members with these glass doors, and each piece of, each plate and each cup, even teacups, have their own special zippered, cushioned cloth container. And that's where everything has basically sat <laughs> for about 20 years. So I say these things not to trivialize what I'm about to say next, to try to explain and get to the heart of the matter. Our human tendency is sometimes to save things, to put them away and forget their God-given purpose. What is the Sabbath? It's a gift. The Sabbath is a treasured gift, and it's not. Maybe sometimes it is put away in a proverbial China, China cabinet, but it's not intended to do for us to do that. It's a gift intended to bring life, sustenance, and renewal. A gift to be used. It's a gift for everyone to rest, everyone to rest. Deuteronomy 5 says oxes, donkeys, slaves, males, females, even out-of-towners shall follow the Sabbath rule which is a rest. Jesus followed this, this law, this Sabbath law, and we have the privilege of knowing Jesus, and we have the privilege of knowing that he has a few things to teach God's people. So skip ahead to the scene in the synagogue. It was a hub of activity. And while I don't know a lot about the Jewish faith, I do know that it was a central spot for community life. People were there to worship and be together and to teach and be taught. The crowd of Jewish believers gathered there and they knew that Jesus was Jewish. Sometimes I have to remind myself. And they knew that Jesus obeyed the Sabbath law. The Sabbath is important. It's how people lived. It's how people lived out their faith. The rule is don't do work on the Sabbath. Even your oxes and servants should do no work. The people had been following this rule, give or take, since it was given by Moses to their great, 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 who knows how many great grandparents. And it had naturally, humanly, somehow been turned around to a burdensome task. So when Jesus spoke up for the woman to hear across the room, People were listening. When Jesus laid his hands on her to touch her and heal her, people were watching. And then she stood straight for all to see and started praising God. I should say, continued praising God. People definitely noticed. But where does the story go from there? Jesus was questioned, questioned by the church leaders because it was loud and it was obvious and it was healing. And was it work? Does this follow the rules? Why? Why aren't you following this rule of Sabbath, they say to Jesus? The synagogue leaders are upset. They say, put that back. You have six days to do that good work. Close the door. I don't think Jesus was intending to be rebellious or a rule breaker. He was, after all, in the synagogue as he had been throughout all of his earthly ministry and, well, actually, since he was eight days old. 
Jesus was a good Jew. He knew the rules and the reasons for them. And on the flip side, the synagogue leader, he was faithfully following what the law said and asking questions, even if perhaps maybe that leader forgot why the Sabbath law is important. After all, there is a healed and liberated woman standing straight and praising God in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And it's the result of this work in question. She is literally standing there in the middle of all of this, pointing to who is important. She's freed. She's physically pointing to God's mercifully freedom-giving work on and through the Sabbath. So, no, Jesus wasn't disobeying the law. We know we are privileged to know this. He was showing them a new way to keep the Sabbath holy. God released the Israelites from slavery. So, too, Jesus releases the woman from her ailment and even releases the leader's mind to rethink what's important. Jesus was redefining redefining how to remember the Sabbath. And so, I ask you, what is important? What do we hold on to? What do we need to hold on more tightly to? And what do we need to let go of. Last week, I asked you what we ignore. Now this is my challenge to you. What do we need to get out of the cabinet? What is unused among us? I don't know the question, I don't really know the answer to this, but I bring this to our attention because of what was already shared today and because today after worship, we're having a ministry team reorientation, a sort of collective think tank that will hopefully get us closer to understanding what we do and why we do it. It's difficult not to want to make our ministry teams into a list of things we must do boxes we need to check, rules to follow. And as a side note, rules are good, kids. Follow them. (laughs) I'm not saying disobey the rules. A china cabinet to dust is not what our ministry teams are. We do not put these things away, all checked and squared away. There are things in this life that need to be looked at like that. But we take sometimes these good gifts of God that are meant to be used to bring life to us. And perhaps we turn them into burdensome tasks. Even when we cling too tightly to these things, good good things get done anyway. And this is part of the good news because even when we in our ministry teams and individually and otherwise forget why we're doing it. And it's because even when we forget why we're doing it, it still gets done and it is still good. It's because God is the one at work and, well, as the children and I talked about, we get together at worship here in this place and we remind each other what is important, sometimes despite our intentions. We must remember that just like the Sabbath, ministry is a gift given to us. Our mission is about Jesus. And who is God? Who is Jesus? He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus declares himself the Lord of the Sabbath, and he frees this woman from her ailment. She she is freed 
to be a beloved and fulfilled and whole child of God. So, like I said, today we're doing that ministry team thing. As beloved children who share in the gifts that God has given us, and we remember the gifts, the gifts of worship, of continual renewal, of God's good creation in us. We remember the holy and important things. What is holy and important that's sometimes hard to work out? Thanks be to God that we are humbled by the word who points us in the right direction. The word who is Jesus. Hold on, Jesus said. Hold on to what gives you life. What sets you free to do things that bring joy to the community of faith. Because that's what God created us for. God created us, delights in us, and as Isaiah reminded us today, call the Sabbath a delight, honor it, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. So then may we point to our why, our answer to the question who of who is Jesus Jesus frees us even when we don't know the answer to the question Jesus shows us about what's important and what can make us whole thanks be to God amen